This is basic requirement two. It's probably the biggest part of the project. Um, you're going to do your stats, you're going to do some graphs, and you're going to make sure you got all the right data types. You've used dictionaries and lists and that kind of stuff. Okay, right. So let's uh, start off with what we had. Just one or two slight changes I've made between videos. I went ahead to test some of the code I'm going to show you here now, and actually I ran into an issue where um, here, I had to add a little bit, little bit of code because it turned out that the chicken fillet roll price, because it had euros in it, the euro symbol, which is a character, like a letter character, it had turned everything in that column into strings. And you can't add or do mets with strings. So I had to turn them all back into numbers. And that's what this does. And the errors just says, look, it just writes nan, not a number, if it encounters any things like that. So if you've got a, a random um, symbol in there, that's what it'll do. So to do my statistics, I'm going to start off by just making the academic year the very first column. I think a lot of people are going to have this issue where they don't want to get the average year between now and when the BB Jesus was born in 0 BC. <laughs> um, yeah, like what? what's the point of getting the average year between what would be the average year? I guess it's like a half of 2024, 1,012. Yeah. I don't know why you want to put that in your project, but there you go. So to do the stats, I'm going to have a dictionary data type. So a, a variable stores some information like that, like, you know, and a list can store multiple things. And that's a list there. So we've ticked that off accidentally. Um, but a dictionary is pairs of values, meaning that it's like master apprentice, room number, temperature, um, my account, uh, Danny Murray and my balance minus a million you know, my um, after a Christmas Amazon. So does that sort of make sense? It's just pairs of values. And uh, yeah, dictionaries, they're called dictionaries in, in Python, but they're not always called dictionaries. You could just call them a database type, you know. So that's what we're going to use. And um, I'm going to just make an empty one. Then I'm going to put stuff into it. I'm going to show you a big chunk of code now. That there's lots of um, comments here to explain this as I go. Right. So let me start at the start. For each column in my spreadsheet of data, okay, so let's just look at my spreadsheet. So what it's saying here is for each column, right, it's going this one, then that one, then that one, in a for loop, you know, iteratively through the list. And then it says if it's not in the non numeric ones. So that's why I had that up. So not this one, right, because this is non numeric. So it's going to start like it's only going to do it for these three. Um, then, um, you're going to get this guy and we're just going to give it a name, right? Stats data is the column we're currently looking at because we're going to use that then to populate our dictionary with stats that mean stats that median stats that mode and range. Um, does that make sense? And you're going to put in those stats data into your dictionary type. When it's all done, it's probably a good idea just to print the dictionary to see what it looks like. Let's do it. I'm going to print it. Oh, actually, I have this open, so um, it's going to give me an error saying I, I can't uh, run my program because I have that Excel sheet open. There we go. Grand. If you don't have, if it says access denied, close your Excel. Um, cool. There's my, my, it's not, it's not great looking though. It's kind of a jumble of everything. So to make it better, I'm going to use the uh, data frame um, pandas thing here. And it turns into a data frame is more like a nice looking spreadsheet inside of, of of Python. You'll see. Look at this, how it looked, right? And look at it now when I press go. Look at those lovely rows and columns. Thank you, data frame. Isn't that lovely? So I'm actually probably just going to completely hashtag get rid of this. I'll, I'll just comment it out because I don't need to see that. Okay, I did it. I saved the file and there's my stats. Okay, so... There we go. That is that part of the this this done. Now the graphing part. Okay, so the graphing part, um, you can use PyGal, you can use Matplotlib or Plotly. I I found Plotly is the nicest kind of looking one. PyGal is pretty good as well, but it does say in the um the requirements that you want to be able to zoom in. And I just I thought Plotly look would look the nice one, but I'm you might you probably can get the same amount of marks for any one of them. So I'm just going to go to the Plotly Python graphing library and, you know, you pick a, 
a nice looking graph that you'd like. And when you click into it, let's say you went like a bar chart, you're going to get a nice little snippet of code down here. Look, that's not so bad, is it? You just put that in and um, you change it to read from, well, your, your CSV. Okay, so I've done that here. Um, I've done the first one. Um, I said a bar chart. There's my, my data. And I'm going to make this column zero in my spreadsheet. So just column zero is the very first one. Because remember, you count zero, one, wait, zero, one, two, three. You know, so it's kind of a little bit strange. I just want to make sure that's totally clear, right? This is column zero, column one, column two, column three. Okay, as in the, in the index value. Now you could say, but that's the... Uh, you would say that's the fourth column, but it's index three, zero, one, two, three. You need to know that, otherwise you're gonna get out of range errors. Right, here we go. So I'm gonna say my X data is gonna be column zero, the very first one. So it's along the X axis, the horizontal. Y is gonna be column index one. So the second column, right? Um, I just, I can, I'm gonna leave this in generic at the moment, but really, um, I, I check, check my data. So what's zero versus one? I would say, hmm, years versus um, the amount of, I don't remember, Dublin city data. Is that housing? I can't even remember this stage. <laughs> okay, whatever it is for, for your project. And then I'm gonna I'm make sure I put in the labels and the years and, and that kind of thing, because it does say in the basic uh, requirements that you must include the title, the labels, and all that jazz, all right? So that's it, and this, if it's plotly, it actually renders that to a, a snippet of HTML to go on a website, right? If it's PyGal, you would generally re render that to an image, like a .svg a vector graphics image, and you'd embed that image into your, your website, okay? So, but this is fine for the moment. Um, I'm gonna show you, there's, there's two more here. I went for a, a line graph, which is this one? I, I'm, I'm just using the the template ones from from the Plotly website, you know, and I'm just linking them up to my data. Um, and then, uh, th sorry, that that was part of it. This this like uh, this line graph uh, sample code was a two parter. It was you had to melt it and then do this this line to just basically to make sure it's in the right in the right order so you can graph it. And my third one that I took from the Plotly website was this scatter plot. Now, just bear in mind as you look through this, all right? So I'm saying that I want, um, yeah, here, columns like one, two, uh, index one, two, and three are going to be graphed against zero, okay? Now, if you are taking my code, you got to be very careful if you're taking any of the examples that you don't have, like, column index position eight, but you've only got four bits of data. And you know, just if you get it out of range or index error, that's probably what it is. All right, so just make sure this number, is, if you've got like four columns, that should be max three. If you've got nine columns, it should be max eight. Yeah, um, so I'm gonna do a few of them against over time. This is a lovely way of, of having multiple columns over the same amount of years with this being your years. Yeah, so that's why I thought I'd show it to you. And then this guy is, a, is like a um, correlation, you know, so is this related to that? Um, I'm going to correlate, or sorry, do a scatter plot, um, plot two against three. Now that's not, <laughs> I know I keep saying this, but that is index position, right? So um, it's going to be these last two, all right, against each other. And to see is the relationship between those two things. So what am I doing there? I'm saying is the amount, the price of something in Dublin, I don't remember what it was, in Dublin South against chicken roll, fillet roll prices. Does this thing affect chicken roll prices? If it's going straight up, then it's proportional. And that means the more that, the more that. If it's going down slope, like skiing down, it's the, the more that, the less than. It's inversely proportional, all right? Um, Cool. Now you'll notice when I run this, nothing happens. It does all this stuff. It says, oh, well, actually, it's got, oh, permission denied. Denied. Of course, I left it open. All right. There we go. Um, so nothing happens. And that's because I 
forgot the last little bit is, yeah, you, you've, you've got the HTML, but I need you to actually sh show me that, right? So it's going to now bar chart dot show and the name of your thing show. And that will open up in Safari or Chrome or Firefox or whatever your browser is. You can see I've got my graphs here, okay? And you can hover over them and zoom in and various things like that. Isn't that lovely, okay? I am later going to put these into a website, into my index.html for a B or three. And then I'm probably going to just comment these out. But it's good to leave these in your code, just comment it out so you can always just test your code is working as far as the charts are being generated. Okay. And then once my web page is open, I can I can do that later. So B or three is next. Oh, I meant to look at the questions uh, that frequently I, I think to myself, um, can you do histograms? Yeah, of course you can do. I just picked any, just pick any chart you want. Um, as long as they're charts, can you use other things like R squared, P value, standard deviation. Do you have to use the ones? No, of course I'm just picking a few. How many do you need? I don't know. Do us do some of them, you know, well, three seems reasonable. Um, must I use dictionaries and these, uh, Tuples, tuples, time. God, God, must I must find a YouTube video that someone pronounced that for me. Um, it it says, and I'll just double check, um, where it says it here. So you, yeah, such as lists. So yes, lists. And I would read this as tuples or dictionaries, as in like that is one thing or the other, not and. It doesn't say and, right? So. That's my interpretation, but I might be totally wrong. Maybe if you don't have tuples, you'll they'll they'll come looking for you at your house. They'll be knocking at your door. I don't know. I'm hoping not, <laughs> because um, very very few students. By the way, what that what that is, I, I don't know how to pronounce it, but I know I know what it is in Python. It's basically like imagine a list in square brackets, right? But with Roundy brackets and the order of these things doesn't change. Like you don't swap them around. You want to kind of like a fixed list that the the, the order is. Done. Yeah, that's pretty much it, right? So, I can't I can't think of a reason to be using them here. So I'm not. Um, that, that's not something you should do in the exam. If they ask you to do something, do it. But I'm saying they hit. They've said or A or B, and I've done A. So I hope that's okay. Oh, and the last one there, I said PyGal or Matplotlib. Yeah. Like I said, I don't know. I'm using um, Plotly. I used PyGal in my last example. I'm sure they're both fine. I mean, it suggested it, right? Like, it would be a bit annoying if they said, here's some suggested things, Seaborn, Matplotly li library, and then, you know, they were subtracting marks, even though they suggested it. So I guess uh, my guesstimate is that all of them are they've suggested are totally valid, and you can use whatever you want. I like Plotly, although there is a very cool cyberpunk graphing skin I saw someone once submit last year. It was pretty cool. So that brings us on to BR3, which is a lot smaller, so it'll be a lot shorter video.